I'm Dr. Raymond Douglas. It's my pleasure to be here with Dr. Stacy Pinellas, who is a strabismus specialist. And hopefully you've watched some of our previous episodes where Dr. Pinellas has described a little bit about double vision and, and how to find a, an expert like her. She's at the UCLA Jules Stein Eye Institute. Today we're going to talk a little bit about treating double vision, uh, treating strabismus. What are the options? Um, and first today, what we're going to talk about is this: are the surgical options. And not that everyone requires surgery, but it's great to know what are the expectations, who needs surgery, and what surgery can accomplish. Being very realistic about it, just because it's a very difficult surgery for patients who have thyroiditis. So thank you first, Stacey. Thank you. So, So patients with thyroid eye disease, I know, uh, present, they're the, one of the toughest groups that you deal with. What is so special about patients with thyroid eye disease who have double vision and, and thinking about the, correct, the surgical correction? Um, so, yes, yeah, so double vision is pretty common in patients with thyroid eye disease, and they do represent a sort of unique group of patients within the practice of a doctor who sees patients with double vision. And the reason for this is that they have other orbital disease that you need to take into account. They have um, orbital proptosis, uh, they have problems with their eyelids, they have swelling around the eyes, they commonly have dry eye and red eyes, and so these are all things that need to be taken into account when you're planning the surgery so as not to exacerbate some of their other problems or at least to anticipate new problems that might occur after the strabismus surgery uh, in this unique group of patients. So a lot of patients come in um, two groups, one who see two images when they look straight ahead, and then other patients who only see double vision when they look down or look to the left or to, to the right. What are some of the things you tell both of those groups of patients about what they can expect with surgery before we even get into what happens during surgery? Um, so if a patient has double vision when they look straight ahead, and presumably in all directions of gaze then, uh, what we typically aim for with surgery uh, primarily is to get them seeing single straight ahead. Usually these patients have pretty abnormal extraocular muscles due to involvement from Graves' disease. So even when we fix or uh, improve the alignment of the eyes looking straight ahead, it doesn't change the fact that their eye muscles are abnormal due to the disease. And so whatever adjustments we make to make them see single straight ahead don't typically translate into every single direction of gaze. So typically I'll tell a patient, listen, we want to get you seeing single straight ahead. Our secondary goal, unless they have another uh, opinion, is to get them seeing single when they look down for reading. So our goal is to have them seeing single, looking straight ahead for driving, for example, and hopefully seeing single when they look down to read. But we don't typically get improvements in every direction of gaze. So a person who comes in with double vision everywhere would be a great success uh, surgical-wise if we get them seeing single straight ahead and looking down and maybe a little bit side to side, but they still may have double vision, for example, looking up. So we like to people to understand their expectations and when you have double vision looking everywhere preoperatively, it's nice to know that you hopefully will see single looking straight ahead, but not necessarily in all directions. On the other hand, a patient who sees single straight ahead but has very bothersome double vision looking left, right, or down, that's a different scenario because they're already seeing single looking straight ahead. So if we're doing a surgery to target a specific direction of gaze, then uh, first of all, we like them to understand the risks, and then we also explain to them what their benefits that should be anticipated. So the major risk for those patients is anytime you do eye muscle surgery, you do risk inducing double vision looking straight ahead. And that's very important for patients to understand that the more we try to target eccentric gazes, the more risk we have of inducing double vision straight ahead. So the strabismus surgeon has to be very cognizant of that and conservative when planning the surgery. So we still may not get everything perfect looking way off to the left or right, but our goal is to improve the field of, um, of, the, of the problem area. So if you want to have single vision looking right, we're gonna try to get you a little bit to the right, but if we try to get all the way 90 degrees to the right, then we're really risking inducing double vision straight ahead. 
So all of those um, expectations need to be understood by the patient. And I think those are great expectations. It's one of the most common questions that I get is that, you know, look, you know, I want my double vision cured. And, and unfortunately, just as you said so well, the muscles are not normal in this disease. And so curing the double vision often means giving them a space where there is no double. And hopefully, you know, they might have to turn their head periodically to help to improve any kind of double vision you see.